thing is, well, I mean, here in Savage Gulf Islands, we already have an extremely brave citizenry because you elected someone from a party that was one person and people were telling you all the time it was a poor idea. So I'm grateful. Obviously, you've done a lot already. But if we need to educate, Savage Gulf Islands, I think, could be the, the catalyst for more national change. So to the extent that you can write letters to newspapers, I know it's very boring to mention it, but a letter published in the Globe and Mail, for instance, talk, or the National Post, or Toronto Star, or Vancouver Sun, this kind of mainstream press, to talk about things, like it was recently in the news about a, a Department of Justice official who's a lawyer who said, look, we've been told over the years not to advise the Minister of Justice when bills we're considering violate the Charter. Now, I was in the House debating the Omnibus Crime Bill. It was obvious that it violated the Charter. Uh, the new bill on refugees that says that if refugees arrive by boat, they're automatically to be detained for a year, including any children over 16. And I don't know what we do with the children under 16. I guess they either go into care or voluntarily join their family in incarceration. I mean, these are clearly bills that violate the Charter. And at one point, I tried a point of order to ask if, there, if the Speaker didn't agree that it was unfair to force members of Parliament to be complicit in passing legislation that was clearly violating the Charter. And the Speaker said, well, no, if that, you know, the Minister of Justice has done this review and it's up to the Department of Justice to tell us if it doesn't. And we came and said, well, we want legal opinions. Show us that Erwin Kotler, former Minister of Justice under the Liberals, made the same, then joined my argument and supported me and said, let's ask for the legal opinions. Let's see a Department of Justice legal opinion that these bills don't violate the Charter. Anyway, that's just as a recent example of a Department of Justice official who was on As It Happens. When something like that happens that twigs your sense of, this is what we're worried about, democracy is in jeopardy, that's a great moment to pick up your, well, I was going to say pick up your pen, but these days it's go to your laptop, your computer, and write a letter to as many newspapers as you can think of that makes the point that the system of government is being eroded by excessive partisanship, and it's quite wrong for a professional civil service to be pushed into saying things that aren't the case. And you also wonder how it is the Department of Transportation could transport Canada could say that uh, super tankers full of oil uh, or bitumen crude can can transit from Kinmet through our waters. Uh, and that was also clearly political interference in what would normally have been public service advice that you have a problem. So, I mean, just as maybe give a complex an example, anytime you see something in the news or read it in the press, that you can use that point to reinforce the Canadians need to vote, you need to demand better. We should, and the other refrain that I think could work if we put it in enough media is, I didn't vote for this. How is it that Stephen Harper has done this? has signed a treaty with the People's Republic of China, which no Canadians ever heard of in advance, never mentioned in an election, which gives them the right to sue us for billions of dollars, and we can't get out of it for 31 years. And, you know, I didn't vote for this. Did anyone hear about this during the election? The more that we educate people across Canada, the better our chances are that we will, number one, I know I promised you this last year, and I haven't done it yet, but I really do want to get Stephen Harper out of office before the next federal election. I was hoping 2012. I'm now, well look, everybody's failed on a New Year's resolution once or twice. So, I, it's on board again. It's my New Year's resolution for 2013. But, you know, if, if we start that refrain across Canada and make people think, particularly people who voted for Harper or for his candidates. Realistically, though, by what process? I, well, oh, there's lots of process. But I didn't vote for this. I didn't, you know, if we start saying, you know, who voted for this? I didn't vote for this. Nobody ever mentioned this. So by what process? Well, the process by which Gordon Campbell was pushed out of office was people realizing he never told us about the HSD. It was public anger forced him out of office. And that's a reasonable process. There are other processes that, in which you could be voted out of Parliament in the House <coughs> by MPs, but that's tricky because I need to get all the I need to get at least eleven conservatives to vote with me. 